We're going to wrap up our discussion on attenuation artifacts in this uh, segment, first by talking about acoustic enhancement. What is acoustic enhancement? In short, there's an increase in the echo amplitude behind or distal to a weakly attenuating structure. An example is a reflection behind a fluid fill cyst. Posterior acoustic enhancement is seen in this example where A describes the um, anechoic fluid within the cyst in that the relative strength of the ultrasound signal through the cyst compared to neighboring media is much less and therefore the signal distal to it becomes enhanced. Again, the phenomenon is described by the fact that the attenuation rate of the structure is lower than the surrounding tissue. This is mostly a useful artifact to help identify fluid fill structures during your scanning. This next example is a transverse view of the gallbladder. As you can see, the dark anechoic circular structure is the gallbladder itself filled with bile and the blue arrow points to the posterior acoustic enhancement portion of the ultrasound signal because the uh, the fact that ultrasound signal is continuous, continuously being attenuated as it traverses deeper in the tissue the fact that the structure itself has less attenuation means that distal to the cyst tick structure or in this case the gallbladder the signal will be enhanced. Let's do a question. This is the transverse view of the uh, carotid artery and internal jugular vein uh, that you saw earlier. What is the red arrow pointing to in this picture? Specifically, what is the artifact that was that is indicated distal to the internal carotid artery? Here are the choices. Is it A, focal banding, B, comet tail artifact, C, posterior acoustic enhancement, or D, acoustic shadowing? You may pause the uh, video and think about your answer and continue when you want to give us your answer. Again, look at this picture. Red arrow pointing to the um, hyperchoic signal. Correct answer is C, posterior acoustic enhancement. As you can see, because the uh, blood filled internal carotid artery has uh, less attenuation, the signal distal to it will be greater than the surrounding structures. Now let's move on talk about focal banding. Focal banding, is in short, is focal enhancement. It occurs at or around the focal zone with increased side by side intensity of structures. It is most prominent with linear phase arrays. This next example illustrates focal banding in a clinical setting. This is a uh, right upper carotid scan of the liver. As you can see, the posterior edge of the liver is uh, fairly hyperechoic. As it turns out, the carrot on the right hand side of the screen is the uh, adjustable location of the vocal zone. And around this vocal zone, uh, occurs focal banding which gives you a an artificial enhancement of the ultrasound signal at that particular location. We'll now finish our discussion on image artifacts by discussing the fourth category of uh, Doppler artifacts. We're going to have a whole uh, lecture, lecture number five, devoted specifically to Doppler physics. But in brief, Color Doppler artifacts are due to one of four possibilities. One is excessive Doppler gain. Two is the use of a normal or 90 degree Doppler angle of incination. Three is reflection or duplication of vessels across a, a reflective plane and aliasing. As you know, when we do a uh, color Doppler measurement, we want to be at least, at most, 60 degrees incination. So if you're anywhere close to 90, you can introduce ambiguity in terms of directivity or direction of the Doppler signal. As a result, you're going to get uh, signals going both ways. Here, the real Doppler signal of this vessel that we're uh, trying to measure has the real component and deposit part of the axis. In the bottom half is the mirror por portion, which is an artifact. In addition, if you get a mirror image of the anatomy, such as the subclavian artery being imaged uh, mirrored by the lung pleura, here you have the uh, actual subclavian artery in the, uh, the proximal portion of the image and you have the mirror image distal to the pleura. As a result of this anatomical mirror image, uh, 
you expect that when you turn on the Doppler, uh, the color Doppler, that you're going to see uh, color flow in both vessels, both the real vessel on top as well as the virtual vessel on the bottom. Therefore, it's very important when you do the measurement that you identify whether anything uh, is not making sense anatomically, which is the case here, and therefore um, interpret the color Doppler results uh, with caution and with some uh, thought. Here again, yellow arrows on the right-hand side point to the, uh, the real the color Doppler signal in the subclavian artery and the, the fake one. Now, aliasing is the fourth issue uh, that can cause Doppler uh, artifacts. Here, the, uh, the fact that you have um, non-blue and non-red signal, kind of colors in between, in case that you have aliasing. The fact that this happens because the pulse repetition frequency, or the PRF, is inadequate. So, solution for aliasing that we'll discuss in lecture number five is by increasing the pulse repetition frequency, or PRF, we, uh, to the point where we can meet the Nyquist criteria namely that PRF is two times the actual Doppler frequency, then we can eliminate aliasing. So in this uh, ultrasound image, you see that the umbilical artery uh, now has no aliasing because you only see uh, red and blue signals and no in-between colors. And that's because you see that the um, uh, PRF is now raised to 28. And uh, by increasing the PRF, as we mentioned, you can eliminate aliasing.